This gentleman is not how you pair sneakers with jeans. Neither is this. And if you think that this is how you pair sneakers and jeans, you desperately need to watch today's video. Now, gents, you're a grown ass man. You can wear whatever you want. Fashion is of course subjective. What matters most is you feel confident and comfortable in your look. All that being said, in my experience and research, there are some things that are more attractive, make a man look better than others. First up, we've got running shoes and jeans. Now, I know that Steve Jobs was able to pull this look off. And if you've got your own cult, yeah, you could probably make it work. But unfortunately for the majority, of men, it makes it look like you're not even trying. Now, if you're going for this look intentionally, all the more power to you. But as we're going to talk about later in this video, you have tons of better options. Next up, we've got cuffing, stacking, and rolling. Whether you decide to stack, roll, or cuff your jeans, you want to make sure that you're doing it in a manner that you've thought through the way it looks. The key here is you want to get the proportions right. Too much stacking, too much excess material, as you can see here, just looks off. And that takes us to this next mistake, getting proportions and fit wrong. Now, if you've been shopping lately, you've probably seen that baggy jeans are in. The problem though with baggy jeans and most sneakers is that those baggy jeans are going to swallow those sneakers right up. You're not even going to be able to see them. Skinny jeans, on the other hand, especially when worn with larger sneakers, aka high tops, all of a sudden the proportions again look off. These proportions right here can all of a sudden make your feet look oversized. So, how to correctly pair sneakers with jeans? Well, gentlemen, that's the subject of today's video. Now, today's video, gents, is sponsored by my friends over at Thursday Boots. And in case you didn't know, gents, they're a lot more than just boots. They've got a wide range of different types of shoes, including a great selection of sneakers. In fact, if you're looking for a classic low top and leather, you can't do wrong with the selection that Thursday has. If white sneakers aren't your thing, grab a pair of low tops in black matte. Now, if you are looking for a bit of contrast, then you can just find it right there in the sole. Here we've got them, the low tops in toffee. Now, if you want something a bit different, check out their heritage leathers. Now, what I like about these is they actually come with leather laces, which gives it a very different look. And on the outside, they've got that natural chromexal horween leather that gets better with age. Now, all Thursday boot sneakers are going to have this really nice buttery soft sheepskin inner lining. They've also got a dual density outsole, which is going to be incredibly comfortable and it's going to be able to get you traction. And on a side note, check out Nothing New. Founded by the same guys over at Thursday Boots, these guys are all about sustainability. If you haven't been over the website, they are selling sneakers. They're basically reusing plastic bottles, reusing materials to create these sneakers. And I've got a number of pairs here in my collection. I have to say, these things are friggin' awesome. This shoe right here is their new Men's Saga 1. It's in navy, but it comes in a variety of other colors as you can see here. Yeah, those black ones are hot off the press and they look really, really good. If you want shoes that are designed for comfort, longevity, and sustainability, you need to check out what they're doing over at Nothing New. I'm going to link to Nothing New down in the description of today's video if you want to see how they're carbon neutral, how with every pair of Nothing New shoes, once you're done with these, you can send them back to the company and you will get a credit on your next pair because these guys are all about making making sure that, hey, we treat the environment right. So, gents, whether you're looking for a pair of boots or you're looking for a pair of sneakers, you want to check out Thursday Boots. Use that link in the description of today's video to get the best deal on the web. So, gents, there are six rules, six guidelines I want to share with you to correctly match jeans with sneakers. Rule number one is to mind the dress code. Now, for most situations, this isn't going to be much of an issue because if you're wearing jeans, if you're wearing sneakers, you are in general dressing casually. However, where this can be an issue is when you're trying to step up the style. Maybe you've got those jeans and you're matching them with a sports jacket. You're trying to dress up the look. Well, if you're going to go with a casual sneaker, it can't help but even bring down the look more. So, you're really pushing the envelope. Can you pull this off? Yes. That being said, would you be better served by wearing a sneaker that's in a darker color? Something that has, you know, as far as sneakers go, a more formal look. What you must avoid are sneakers that no matter how you put it, they are casual. Yes, they're great for running, but but for showing up trying to dress up jeans, nah, not a good combination. Rule number two and tied directly to that last one, you want to choose a pair of sneakers that complement the jeans you're wearing. Now, of course, you can select sneakers that have a high contrast. Oftentimes, we do this when we choose white or black sneakers. A bright colored pair of sneakers paired with bright colored jeans, all of a sudden, people don't know where to look and it ends up making you look like a clown. Now, this next rule seems obvious, but I see the mistake made all the time. Pay attention to the cleanliness of your sneakers. If you're 
sneakers are white in color, you want them to appear white, not yellow, and definitely not stained and covered with dirt and grime. That being said, dark colored and black sneakers aren't exempt. The reality is any colored sneaker can get dirty. Usually light colors though, you got to be more careful with and pay more attention to. The next two rules are particular to the denim. First up, you want to make sure that you select the right style. We talked about that in mistakes, getting the proportions right, but really that's going to be the cut of the denim. And then pay attention to that leg opening and the basic out seam. That's the length of the leg. If it's too long or too short, it can really make the combination look bad. Last but not least, pay attention to the overall style. So if you're going for a more modern look, this is simply your wardrobe. Everything here is going to be sleek. Everything here is going to be minimalist. There are certain types of sneakers that work with that. If you're going more for a retro style, you're a big fan of Jordan 1s, you want to bring those into your wardrobe, you want to be careful about mixing them in with that modern sleek look. Again, gents, these rules, these guidelines, they are but a path. If you really understand what you're doing, understand that you can bend, you can break any of these rules. Now, earlier I talked about the the right jeans to wear with sneakers because not all jeans are going to work well. So let's go ahead and bring up the five different styles. You're going to see skinny jeans, slim fit jeans, you're going to see straight leg jeans, boot cut jeans, and relaxed fit jeans. Now, in general, in the fashion industry, we see a move away from skinny over towards baggy. I do think extremes either way don't really work for a gentleman unless he's got the body type that's going to fit with that. But when it comes to baggy jeans, I do think you still have some options. If this is the way you want to go, you want something that's really a relaxed fit, then you want to look for sneakers that are going to be a bit larger. And one of the easiest ways to be able to incorporate larger sneakers into your wardrobe is to go for high tops. Now, high top sneakers, as many of you guys know, were originally developed to be able to provide support to the ankle. Very simple way of basically giving that extra layer, being able to lace them to the top. Athletes, especially in basketball, notice they had, I would have less injuries if I had shoes that basically prevented my ankles from rolling. Now, when it comes to the fashion world, they're always paying attention to influencers. And in the 1950s, 60s, we saw the rise of the athlete as an influencer, Michael Jordan being the one that everyone knows about. But going back even further to 1930s and 1940s, we can look at the Converse All-Stars. Yeah, the Chuck Taylors right there. Well, these were a go-to for the top athletes at the time. What about boot cut jeans and sneakers? Well, this is going to be the one style of jean that I'm going to say stay away from if you want to be able to pair them with sneakers. Intuitively think, oh, I could wear these with high tops and just wear them over, but they just seem to consume the sneaker, especially if you want to be able to show them off. Yeah, if you want a classic well-proportioned look, stay away from the boot cut unless you're going to be wearing a pair of boots. In that case, of course, the boot cut works. Next up, we've got skinny jeans. You know, as long as they're not painted on the body and if you've got a thinner profile, I think skinny jeans can work for some men, especially if you're going to want to wear a low top sneaker. Again, here the key is making sure the sneaker is not overly sized. So if you're going to wear skinny jeans, probably stay away from high tops. A better look though, especially for the professional man, if you're over the age of 30, maybe look to slim cut jeans, a tapered jean. It's going to be more versatile uh, depending on how much excess material you've got here. You're going to be able to either pull off high tops, but low tops are I think where most men should start when it comes to wearing sneakers with jeans. But this jean type in general is going to be the easiest one to be able to pair this combination with. It's going to be relatively versatile. Again, depends on the taper. If it's too much of a taper, it's definitely not going to work for the high tops, especially if it seems like you can tuck them into the high top. Yeah, that's going to be too loose because you do want to be able to stack the jeans. Yeah, if you're going to be going with a jean, make sure that you've got enough room down there at the leg opening that you're going to be able to stack them properly. And right with that, we've got the straight cut. This is going to be great for the guy that's a little bit larger, carrying a little bit more weight around the midsection. A straight cut proportionally is going to work with either type of sneakers, a wide range of sneakers that you want to be able to pair with this. This is going to be a little bit harder to dress up. It's going to be more casual. The slim, the tapered look, I think actually be worn with a sports jacket. This look right here is going to be a bit too baggy, I think, to be able to pull off with most sports jackets. That being said, if you want to go for that casual look of just wearing a casual button down, maybe wearing a Henley, maybe just wearing a t-shirt with your sneakers and jeans, this is a great combination. Next up, let's talk about jean wash. You're going to see four major types of wash out there. First up, you're going to have the dark denim, which I've recommended in many of my videos. I think this is going to be the most versatile of all the washes because you can dress it up, you can dress it down. It can be casual mixed in with a t-shirt. And when it comes to sneakers, you're going to have 
the most options. The only issue with the wash is if you're trying to wear this with light sneakers, there is going to be a higher contrast. I know not all guys are going to be comfortable with that. So, if you are a fan of light colored sneakers, then consider a light wash. Now, light washes, when it comes to jeans, these are going to be some of the most casual jeans out there. That being said, if you want to pair them with white sneakers, if you want to pair them with light gray, maybe off white, anything like that, you're going to find that this is just a really simple, easy combination. That being said, mid wash, you could argue, is actually even easier to match with light color because there is going to be a bit of contrast, but it's not overly done even with white here. And this is going to be more of the true blue jeans. I do think that these aren't as easy to dress up. They're not as versatile. A lot of guys, especially over the age of 30, start to steer away from these because they just come off as too casual. But again, if you're going for that casual look, you're going to be matching these with casual sneakers. Mid washes also work really well with sneakers. They're going to have a variety of colors. They can have a little bit of contrast right here. We have three colors, but if you want to bring in sneakers, you know, that have multi colors or you want to bring in a little bit of green, a little bit of red, black with a bit of white on any of those sneakers, then the mid wash is really, I think, where they're going to shine. Now, what about distressed denim? Not going to be for everybody. I do think if you're going to pull this off, you've got to wear it with confidence, uh, but with distressed denim, you're pretty much going to want to pair these with casual sneakers. So, you're not going to want to try to dress these up. I mean, you can, and I've seen guys be able to pull this off with leather sneakers, but this is where you're going to go for the more casual sneakers to be able to style with them. So, now let's talk about the different categories of sneakers. And the problem with this is that many of the sneakers, they actually fit in multiple categories, but I'm going to try to break this up so you can easily understand. Canvas sneakers. This is where sneakers really got their start. In the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, we saw the rubber sole with a canvas upper. In fact, if you go back even farther, we did see variations, but really that's when it became mass manufactured. Now, there's a couple of things I love about canvas sneakers. In general, they're going to be more lightweight. They're going to be more breathable than any type of leather or dress sneaker out there. They're also usually going to be more affordable. All that being said, believe it or not, leather sneakers actually have a longer history. Now, they didn't pick up as much because leather has always been a luxury material with more expensive to manufacture and sneakers, you know, they experimented with different materials. They initially, the first pair of sneakers were made from leather. Now, leather historically has great properties that made it attractive for footwear. One of the big ones is durability. Basically, you can bend leather tens of thousands of times and assuming it hasn't been exposed to moisture or any damaging materials, it's going to always come back to its original form. And besides being durable, it's also naturally resistant to abrasion and other types of damage, whether it be the elements or it be, you know, chemicals or anything else that is going to be there on the ground. Leather also cleans up really well. It can take a shine, it can take dyes, so you can get a bit of a sheen on it, which is going to give it a dressier type of look. Now, the next category is going to be sports sneakers. And yes, I know there are canvas and leather sports sneakers, but in general, this category of sneaker includes shoes that are made for a specific purpose. This is going to include basketball shoes. This is going to be running shoes, weightlifting shoes, tennis shoes, sprinting shoes. Any shoe that is made for a particular sport is going to fall into this category. Now, I'll be straight up, gents. Of course, you can wear a sports shoe with jeans. You can do, again, whatever you want. But in general, for a lot of people, especially when it comes to running shoes, this looks like you're not even trying. Now, basketball shoes, especially those that are going to be on popular athletes, those, they actually have a very interesting history in how they mix in with fashion. Be careful, again, when you're mixing a sports shoe with a jeans, sometimes it just looks like you don't even know what you're doing. You're not trying. Now, this next category is perhaps the youngest, and that is the dress sneaker. And I know a lot of people out there, especially traditionalists, they're thinking that can't even exist. That's an oxymoron. The word sneaker mixed in with dress clothing. It's like oil and water. You know, they can't mix. Well, they sort of do because that's the thing that happens with style over time with fashion is that uh, we start to see things emerge. And what we notice is that men want to be comfortable. And a lot of them are getting away from dress shoes. They're going into these sneakers and it's not just, you know, the leather upper and they're going with these non-traditional designs. Some of these leather sneakers, you know, they actually almost look like dress shoes. That being said, if you're dressing for black tie, you're going to want to keep it traditional. But if you're wearing a suit and you've got foot problems and you find some of these dress sneakers, hey, they just work. I feel comfortable. Again, you're confident in that look, then go for it. I do think there are other options, but I know why a lot of guys go for this. Now, are dress sneakers always going to dress up the jeans? Are they going to dress up the outfit? Well, I think if you're going for a jean and sneaker combination that you can wear with a sports jacket, I do think that, yeah, I would be looking at dress sneakers, but don't think that dress sneakers are ever going to be at the level of dress shoes, at least probably not for the next 30 or 40 years. Now, what about retro sneakers? 
Seeger. So this is where they take a design that was popular in the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, maybe just in the thousands, and they bring it back. These are going to be more into the fashion space, and I actually do like this. I like seeing something that was a classic design not slip away, not disappear. An example of this is going to be Air Jordans. You're going to see the Air Jordan 1s being very popular, but also the Air Jordan 3s, the Air Jordan 6s, and the Air Jordan 4s. Now, fashion sneakers are going to be designed specifically for trends. For you know, they're not going to make sense functionally all the time. They are going to be probably a little bit louder. Sometimes some people would say obnoxious, but if you are a hype beast, you're into fashion, you want to show that you're on to the latest trends, more power to you. And you, what are you doing watching this video? But in this case, if you're going to get into this, you kind of need to know what's moving, what's popular. You know, many of you guys have seen Adidas got into this game and got burned and a few other. Yeah, it's a very interesting space. And of course, I couldn't leave out the category of dad sneakers. Dad sneakers are all about comfort and wearing them with the right type of socks all the way up. But seriously, you get the right pair of dad sneakers, you are not going back. I actually don't normally wear dad sneakers. I like boots a bit more. But when it comes down to it, guys, um, you know, strangely enough, dad sneakers are making a huge fashion wave right now. Now, really quick, I do want to mention lacing systems. So, traditional lacing is going to be where the majority of you guys are going to want to buy shoes that have this. If you're buying a pair of shoes and they've got Velcro, that's fine. I get it. Some of you guys maybe have our throttle shoe. You, know, you want something simple, but understand that's probably going to be best on a sports or performance shoe. The same thing with quick lace systems. I think that they work. They look good, but they're, we're going to be more for shoes that are going to be more functional in nature sports shoes. Now, I have seen a lot of these slip-on variant sneakers coming about. I think it's really interesting, again, from a convenience standpoint. As a guy that travels, I like slip-ons. One of the reasons I don't wear sneakers normally when I'm traveling is I don't want to deal with the lacing, so I see that as being attractive. However, you want to make sure they're not too casual looking which right now, the majority of them are. Now, I mentioned color. So, the basic rule here is that neutral colors, we're talking grays, whites, blacks, and beiges. These compare with pretty much any type of jean. Yes, some are going to have a higher contrast, they're going to have a lower contrast depending on the type of jean. But understand that if you get sneakers, especially solids in any of these colors or even with a bit of contrast in the sole, they're going to be relatively easy to match and you're going to be safe. And speaking of being safe, if you want to just go for a monochromatic look, this is going to be where the jeans and the sneakers are relatively close in color. This is always going to be an easy combination. And let's talk about fashion trends. Of course, style is ever evolving, but be careful of the whimsical winds of fashion because they change. If you are chasing trends, it can be done, but you need to stay into the loop. You need to be aware of what people are wearing and you need to be prepared to be able to spend money on something that will not be in style this next season. So, what video to watch next? Well, we should probably talk about different shirt combinations. The shirts that you can wear with jeans and how to wear them properly. Guys, I got you covered in this video right here. And if you want more of this jean series, how to mix and match and wear things correctly, I'll link to more videos down in the description of today's video. Enjoy.